YouTube, Lenny Sly, RoadWarriorTC.com. Welcome to another video. Um, as you can see, we've put up a bunch of videos on firearms, uh, weapon retention, training videos the past couple of videos that we've done. That's what we've been focusing on. This one is going to be a little bit different. It's not so much going to be a weapon, well, it's probably going to be a weapon retention slash you drawing your weapon out of duress, single-handedly, whatever it may be. Um, and the person basically engages on you and grabs onto your wrist. So I'm going to show you how to apply a Nikio lock, which is an Aikido technique, to the actual application of somebody grabbing your wrist. So you can still do that, where you can do, apply a Nikio holding the gun. Um, I'll also probably show from the holster aspect of this, single hand draw type of, and how to get into a Nikio lock as well with that. So, as always, what we've been talking about in the beginning of the videos is that we like to show that we use live, not live, live, whatever, real firearms within our training. We don't use blue ASP guns, red guns. We don't use yellow rubber pieces of shit because that doesn't give the realism that the gun that you actually carry with does. Okay, so I highly recommend that when you train doing any type of weapon retention or any type of uh, disarming techniques, you use a real gun, okay? Obviously, we use a product called Snap Caps. Again, we've been endorsing this product in all of our videos, showing everybody that we're not using live ammo. As you can see, the weapon is clear. There is nothing in the weapon, okay? We use Snap Caps for, for it's a training aid. We use it so you could do malfunction drills, you can do speed loading drills, um, basically chamber, you know, all kinds of stuff. That's what we use them for. Uh, we can get into a, a, a video discussing that and the reason why later down the road we'll show you some examples of that. Um, but this is also a safety precaution for us, okay? To ensure that everybody knows that's on the floor that there is no live ammunition in house, okay? Pretty much 90% of my students are concealed carry holders. Um, that's what everyone does. We're pretty much all concealed carry holders. And everyone knows, you know, the guys that, you know, they carry to class and stuff, you know, they take their rig off or whatever. Nobody unloads their weapon, that type of thing, because we all trust each other, okay? When you're doing these types of, um, these types of training drills, obviously it's very important that everyone knows that there's no live ammunition in the gun. Um, I've been teaching this stuff for years, and over the past two years, I've put up a lot of videos on, on weapon disarming and stuff like that. And out of the past several years that I've taught weapon disarming and weapon techniques with real firearms, we've never had an accident. No one ever accidentally forgot to put dummy rounds in their gun and they left the live rounds in the gun. We've never had an accident, okay? It's, the simple, it's just a simple fact that everyone knows. We train with firearms, everybody has their own snap caps. Everybody knows, unload the weapon, or you show up without the weapon loaded to begin with, and you have snap caps already in, you know, in magazines or however you do it. And we trust everybody, you know, that, that trains with us. They trust us. So they, they see it. We all know that nobody has live ammunition in the gun. And yeah, can mistakes happen? They can. But it hasn't happened because of the way how we conduct classes. Everybody knows not to use live ammo. So again, this is the reason why we keep stressing this. We use snap cap dummy rounds. That's what we use for this. Even when we're just doing... Uh, weapon, you know, retention drills and stuff like that, we still use dummy cap ammunition, uh, dummy cap, snap cap ammunition in the magazines. We don't even leave the magazines empty because we don't know what's going to go from one to the next. We do a weapon retention video, next thing you know we're doing a disarm type of thing, so there's no point to not have them in the gun, so we just leave them in the gun when we're, when we're actually doing firearm training drills like this. Um, so that being said, this is, again, we've discussed this in the beginning of the other videos. It's not how we got to this situation. This is a situation that, that happened. So we're not concerned about how he got to me, how he got to my wrist, or how he got uh, access to my firearm, or was able to get his hands on my gun. That's besides the point here. This is what we're showing you. We're cutting all that out, and we're showing you what you can do when that situation arises. So for an example, what we're going to show the switch. For whatever reason, I had to draw my weapon. Okay? No one is just going to stand there and you move, don't move. 
No one's gonna stand there as you draw your gun on somebody, especially one-handed, okay? This gun does cause some duress, even when it's not chambered with live ammo. That is the point. If you're always using a plastic gun, you don't take it seriously. When there's a real gun pointing at you, all of a sudden, the duress starts kicking in. Okay? Even though you know there's no live ammo, it still gives that, you know, that, holy shit, I'm looking down the barrel of a real gun. You know, when was the last time you looked down the barrel of a real gun? You know, especially when somebody else is holding it. You know, it, part of the reason why we train this way is, if you ever encounter something on the street, okay, your natural reaction would be to start bobbing and weaving and, and putting your hand out, and this is what I'm gonna show, to get the muzzle off of you, okay? If you're not trained to deal with having a live firearm in your face, you're naturally gonna be scared, okay? Even with your training partners in class, this is gonna cause a little bit of a, yeah, that's kind of uncomfortable, you're pointing a real gun in my face, even though I know it's not loaded, it's still uncomfortable. It's supposed to be uncomfortable, because when a real gun gets stuck in your face, it's gonna get real uncomfortable real quick because there's a 100% chance that there is a round in the chamber and it takes less than eight pounds to pull that trigger and it's tag on the toe, cancel Christmas, it's on to the next life for you. So really gotta be careful about those things, but you also, if you train this way and you guys train however you want, this is how we do it, you train this way, you're gonna train yourself to deal with a real firearm in your face. So when it does happen, you don't get stage fright and freeze up and then get your fucking head blown off, okay? You respond accordingly and you respond fast. Because you know, it's not your buddy at the end of that gun that's holding that gun, it's somebody that wants to fucking hurt you. Take your life, take you away from your family, put you in the ground. That tends to amp things up a little bit for me. So I'd rather train this way than train with a fucking plastic gun where that's, that's not gonna make me break a sweat. I'm gonna look at that and be like, yeah, well, you know, you, you couldn't fucking shoot me with that even if you wanted to. You know, the seriousness is what we do. It's the same thing with like how my Aikido training is and the way I've been doing videos and, you know, showing people the truth about Aikido and what works, what really works and how it can work. It's the same thing, okay? Yeah, if you practice Boken training or you do Kenjitsu, you're not using live bladed swords, which actually Bob and I have done some live bladed drills before. And you know what? It's, it'll raise the hair on the back of your neck, there's no doubt about it, because one false move, one mistake, and someone's getting cut, you're taking a ride to the hospital to get stitches or get a finger sewn back on or anything like that. So you have to, you have to address everything with, with a, a clear mind, being very serious, and obviously being extremely safe. So. For whatever reason, I have to draw my gun, okay? He's not just gonna stand there. As I'm drawing it, he immediately grabs at that point. He might try to hit. This is just one idea of this. How do you get to Nikyo from here? He starts pushing on me. I'm gonna wanna maneuver this around to get Nikyo at that point, okay? I have it locked up. I can pull on this, and this is applying, okay? Where normally you wouldn't be able to pull on a regular Nikyo. Regular Nikyo is here, you can pull, but this is a lot firmer. Can you feel that? It's different. It's different than having a gun and applying this and pulling this with the gun. It's different. On top of it, I also have a tack light. Bam! I can nail him in the face with a tack light to where I can blind him at that point. Okay? Tack lights are actually a very good accessory for weapons, especially if you carry all the time. If you have to draw your gun at, you know, at two o'clock in the morning, you wanna see what the hell you're drawing your gun at. You know, you don't wanna sit there and guess. It could be a kid with a fucking cell phone. It could be something stupid. And then you go and you whack somebody because you can't determine what they have in their hands. So I highly recommend getting a tack light for your firearm if you carry all the time. My choice, my personal preference is Surefire X300 Ultra. It works on any rail on any firearm. 500 lumens or 600 lumens, depending on how bad you want to blind the guy. Either way, 500 lumens is going to put somebody, you're going to be like a deer in headlights. You're going to stop dead in your tracks. And on top of it, it's going to fuck up someone's night vision. So when their eyes adjust to the night, once you nail them with that type of, that type of lumen in their face, it's going to take 30 minutes for them in order to readjust to the elements that they're in. If it's pitch black outside, they're going to see nothing but a big blur. And you can literally skip away and they're not going to be able to determine 
where you exactly went because it's going to take them a long time for them to regain their sight 100% to be able to identify where you are. And by that time, hopefully you're gone. So again, I draw the weapon, he instantly grabs. At that point, you got to do it. Now, depending on the situation, if I'm drawing my gun, I've said in previous videos, if I have to draw my gun, more than likely I'm using it. Okay, it can be as simple as anything. He could be attacking me, he could be 300 pounds. Okay, he already has the advantage over me in strength and size, so I have to think accordingly. You know, now that's what I would do. Now, other people in the state of Illinois, um, from my understanding, from what I tra the training that I got from it, if you are in clear and present danger of receiving imminent battery or death, okay, you can draw down on somebody. Uh, nobody can determine what you're feeling in the heat of the moment. If you feel that you are in threat of losing your life, you have every right to protect yourself. But that's all based off of circumstance and you know the situation. Everything's different. Nothing is a cookie cutter situation. Nothing is, you know, your routine, whatever. It's what happens, happens. Okay? You just need to know how to do it accordingly. So these are options for you to use when, if and when that time ever presents itself. If he was to grab my gun, okay, come in, he comes in to grab my gun, I can get my gun out of my holster and apply knee kill that way as well. If we go back to the original video that I did, one of them, he's grabbing, he's pushing down on this. I separate the holster from the weapon by dropping my body as I'm getting resistance up. I drop. Instead of dropping my elbow into his body, I can drop. What if he engages me and starts moving my hand out because he sees the gun, so he starts engaging. Now I can get knee kill that way and I can apply knee kill. I can step on his hand at that point. I have this lock. Then from there, anything can happen. A lot of bad things can happen at that point. If he grabs with the other hand, I can apply to the face, draw this out, come over the top, knee kill this way, push into his body, and apply knee kill that way. Go right to his body as well with this if I needed to. It could be done. Okay? Anything happens, right? Same thing. He goes from here. Go right for his face, I can eye gouge. What if he doesn't let go? What if the eye gouge, what if the eye gouge does not work? Lower my hips, go right over, up and over. I can actually move this right to Nikyo by 10 conning into him to where he has to come around and I can apply the Nikyo lock. Here, I got a clear shot right at his face if I needed to. But why would I? I already have him basically neutralized. I can bring him right down to the ground at that point, lock this up, just knee right on his arm. If I have to, if I have to go this route, I can pistol whip him and smack him right in the back of the head. Any of these things are possible. Any of them are possible. If he grabs with two hands, you know, I get the gun out. How do I do knee kill from that? Same way. Can I come up through the middle? No, I can't. Can I come out to the outside? Yes, I can. And I can apply this. Then I pull off his fingers at that point, Use an elbow, lock technique, lock him down. I have his fingers, weapon at the back of his head, if need be. Okay? So this is a short video on this. Thank you. So that's just some ideas on how you can actually put an Aikido Nikyo wrist lock onto somebody when somebody grabs your weapon. Um, if you like the video, hit a thumbs up. Drop a comment down below. I'll do my best to respond. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe. Support the channel, share the channel, share the videos. Hit the little bell icon so you get all the notifications when we put up new videos. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace out.